Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the CDL Driving Academy podcast. And we're getting close to the end of the year, and that's why I'm bringing you a very special guest, somebody very dear to my heart, and somebody who is going to help you if you do not like paying taxes. And last time I checked, if you don't like that three-letter term of IRS, this guy's the guy that you have to know. Now let me introduce you to the man that you have to know, my personal best friend and my personal CPA. And if you don't know what a CPA is, that's somebody who classifies as a certified public accountant. And that's somebody who, if they're good, they're going to help you pay as little in taxes as possible. Welcome to the show, Mr. Fit Accountant. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on here, Jonathan. Nice. Uh, welcome, and let's talk about this first, your name. How did you get the name The Fit Account? You look kind of fit. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much gave the name to myself. Uh, I love being fit. Uh, as you know, we both ran track in college, so mm-hmm. that's how we met. Um, I do jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I compete in tournaments. I do kettlebells. I do CrossFit. So just love to be fit, which is the irony in that because I sit down most of the day <laughs> at yeah, my that, computer. That so. is true. But if he's not sitting down uh, behind a computer, he is always working out himself. He is always trying to get me to work out too, but I think I work a little bit too much and uh, <laughs> I always find an excuse to get it. Not, not do it. All right, so uh, I brought you on today because again, close to the end of the year, usually like the business time, people don't worry about taxes till April, but December 31st is usually when most people finish off their books and they have to start calculating what's going on. If they wait till April, then it's already too late, right? Exactly, yeah. So if the year is done, there's not much you could do because most business owners that we're pertaining to, they're on a cash basis, which means whatever comes in and whatever goes out is pretty much it. So if it's January 1st, 2023, and you haven't made any moves before then, you're pretty much set on what you can do, right? You've limited yourself, essentially. So we've got a few weeks left in the year where we can actually manipulate your tax bill if you want to pay less taxes make sure you pay attention so what we're going to be doing today i want to give the uh, the viewers a lot of education on exactly how they should be viewing money uh, what are the different ways that an actual truck driver can earn income and what are the tax implications from it right because me and you both know it doesn't matter how much you make and really matters how much you keep correct so if you make a hundred thousand dollars and the government takes fifty thousand dollars because of taxes because you don't do proper tax planning, that means you didn't make hundred thousand dollars. You made fifty, uh, and that's a huge difference, right? A hundred percent. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of clients before they met you uh, actually were dealing with that the whole time. Yes, uh, the clients that I get referred to, or I meet, or I, uh, you know, I onboard. It's interesting how much they don't know, which is great because I could show that value. But it's also scary because you know you're giving a lot to Uncle Sam. And at the end of the day, the IRS code, it was made, it, it has a bunch of deductions, a bunch of tax breaks that help business owners. Like that, that is what it was made for. So you can limit your taxes as little as possible. Some people even pay zero taxes. Perfect. So before we get into it, uh, let's kind of talk about the different uh, places where when it comes to taxable income uh, in the trucking industry itself. So if somebody wants to graduate, uh, and wants to go get a job uh, working for a company, they're going to be a normal employee, right? How do employees pay taxes? How does that all work? Uh, That's a great question. So as an employee, you are what you call a W-2 earner or earned income. Essentially is every week, bi-weekly, once a month, you get a paycheck, they withhold taxes out of your paycheck, and that those taxes are then remitted to the IRS or whatever state you live in, or you I should say whatever state you work in, then it's remitted to that state. So as an employee, you don't really do much in terms with taxes, right? You get paid, you do your work, you work your hours, and then the company, whoever's paying you, takes that money and gives it to the IRS and gives it to the state. So there's the least amount of flexibility if you're in that W-2 category. Correct, because you're working for somebody else and the wages are set and you're just worried about what you're doing on work and the tax code. There's some things there for you, but majority is not for you. Okay. Now, say you know, uh, somebody wants to go work for a company, they give them a choice. Hey, you can work 1099 or you can work W-2. What is your advice for that? My advice would be, first, it's more advantageous, which it's... The benefits are a lot more if you are working as an independent contractor. 
And what uh, is that, 1099? That's right? a 1099. Okay. So that means you essentially own your truck or you know, you're, you, you have your own business. You're the one who goes searching for loads to carry or, or finding dispatchers and all that. Like you're, you're, you are the one generating income for yourself and your company okay. if you have one. So W-2 employee is the, on the lower end. 1099 is a little bit higher. The next level up, I would be say they want to start their own business. Maybe they have one, two, three, or a fleet a of trucks. Of tr right? Exactly, a fleet of trucks. That and that gives them the most flexibility. Absolutely, because then now you're opening up. You have a full blown business, which means you likely have employees of your own. Um, you have other contractors of your own, and then now there's just deductions out the wazoo. Whether you're traveling to get more income, whether you're you know you're buying a building because you need an office space for your employees to run your business. So that's probably the cream of the crop because there's a lot of things you could do there to lower your, your income. Nice. So over the years of dealing with uh, Bayan as my CPA and, and being in business, this is kind of how I've learned to simplify it and let me know if, if I'm correct. An employee, you have no decision on what you pay in taxes because Uncle Sam does not trust you enough to pay your taxes on your own. So they, he takes his money before he, they even give you yours, right? Exactly, and we call that tax withholding. So yep. they withhold the taxes before you even get your money in your paycheck. Now, when it comes to becoming a business owner, you technically pay taxes only on your profit, correct? Correct. So, and when it comes to deductions, you get to decide what your profit is. This is true. So by deductions, just so we're all on the same page, it means some type of expenses that has to do with business, right? Exactly. And then you can reduce that from make your profit smaller. Yeah. And if your profit is smaller, that means you pay less in tax. Exactly. Let me add a little color to that. So the right. deduction, the IRS defines deductions ordinary and necessary. Mm -hmm. So ordinary and necessary for the business. And for all you out there, deduction is also known as a write-off. That's the sexier term. It lowers your income. So let's play a quick game. I'm gonna list, because I know I've dealt with a lot of truck drivers in my past, and what usually happens is they go from making no money before they get their CDL license, they come to a great school like Driving Academy, we get them the CDL, and then we help them find a job, and then they start making more money than they ever did in their life. So, and then when somebody starts making a lot of money for the first time, they do a lot of stupid things with money. <laughs> so let's go down the list and see what is deductions, what's not. And uh, we'll put it up here. So, first question is going to be, is this Gucci belt a deduction or not a deduction for a truck driver? Not a deduction. Not a deduction. Why not? <laughs> because it needs to be ordinary and necessary. So, is that Gucci belt, do you need it for your business? Probably not. Probably not. What if they say it's my uniform? Then maybe we're get, treading into gray, war, gray, gray, gray waters here because mm -hmm. if you have your logo on it or you have something that's business related and you wear that belt and you have to, you consistently wear it, you could argue that that belt is deductible. Nice. So Gucci belt, not deductible. <laughs> uh, when it comes to knowing what to spend your money on, if you can't write it off, don't spend on it, especially in the beginning. You want to save that money and then we'll teach you exactly what to do with it after. Uh, the next thing is going to be, say uh, I have a, I rent, I rent an apartment or a house and I have an office inside my apartment or house. Can I deduct any of the rent that I pay? Yes, you can. Uh, you could deduct, we call it the home office expense. And pretty much what that is, is if you're using the space you have, whether it's just a little, small, little part of your apartment that you're renting, and you're using it to, like I said, find loads if you're, or, you know, an um, owner operator, or maybe you have a fleet of trucks and you're not ready for that big office, you are calling brokers or you are the broker and, you know, stuff like that. As long as that space is used to conduct your business, whether making phone calls, paying uh, business bills, looking for uh, um, ways to generate more income, the IRS allows you to take a percentage of the cost. So let's use the rent, for example. Let's say the rent is $1,000. I mean, not anywhere here in New Jersey, but <laughs> let's say the rent is $1,000 and you know you use 20% of that space. That's $200. That you could write, write off the That you could write off, exactly. And then wow. if you times that by 12 months, now all of a sudden you're, we're talking about real dollars here. Because if you're an employee, right, so just so you guys keep this in mind, say you're making $1,000 a week, uh, you would have to pay, pay your rent based on uh, income that you did after they took your taxes. When it comes to being a business owner, you get to keep all of the money. The, the government's not taking any money away from you on a weekly basis. And you tell the government at the end of the year how much you made. So that means you can actually reduce how much you made in profit 
uh, b- by adding all these extra write-offs, like like you're saying. Correct? Exactly, yeah. And well, let's use a, even a basic example, W-2 employee salaried, right? And again, there's nothing horrible about being a W-2 employee. No. As, as you're, if you're earning, you're earning, right? You, you know, to, to each his own. But as a W-2 employee, you have $100,000. That $100,000 probably, let's say, net $70,000 that you're getting in your paycheck. Maybe, you know, and if you live in the great state of New Jersey, probably less plus health insurance and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Now you take $100,000 that you made as a owner operator, independent contractor, which means you're also self-employed in the eyes of the IRS. That $100,000, depending on your expenses, you can write off certain things that could lower that $100,000. And those things could be ordinary and necessary that benefit you, but also good enough to lower your income. So, so far, Gucci belt, not a write-off. <laughs> uh, home office is a write-off. Yes. How about like when uh, I want to go out to dinner? Can I write that off? Yes, you can. But how you write it off is very important. So, if we go out to dinner, I'm a, I'm a owner operator. I'm looking for ways to generate more income. I say, hey, Jonathan, I want to take you out to dinner. I want to talk business. As long as you have that dinner at a restaurant and I pay for the whole meal for you and me, then that amount is a write-off. Nice. How about like cell phone bill? If I gotta pay Verizon or get the new iPhone, can I write that all off? Yes, you can, but it's to a percentage of what you use for the business. So the reality is if you have a cell phone, you're probably using for personal and business. So this is where documentation comes in. But as an owner operator, you might be making majority of your calls or doing conducting your business 95% of the time, which is, sure. which is, which is substantial. How about a laptop? A laptop, yes, if it's being used for business. Again, always think ordinary and necessary. Am I using this for business? Guess what? Write that whole thing off. So that means, say, I want to put like a um, a PlayStation and a TV screen inside my truck uh, when when I'm off to make sure my mental state is correct. <laughs> will, will that be a write off too? Uh, that's probably going to be a tough one. A tough, uh, <laughs> you you could argue that off, but that that would be a tough one. All right. So there's black, there's uh, white, and then there's that gray area. And some people yeah. like to play in the gray. Some people don't. So, but our job is to give you the. Um, the information that you need so and then you can make the decision that you want exactly for for if they somebody has a specific question or maybe they're looking for a cpa how do they contact you oh they can call me at uh my phone number i'm free to give it out 908-543-4716 cool or they can email me and i will get back to you with uh, an answer or consultation and we could see if you know if I'm the right fit for you. Well, they can DM you on Instagram too, right? Yes, they can as the fit account. <laughs> fit account on Instagram. That's right. All right, so Gucci belt, not a deduct, not a deduction. PlayStation, you might be able to get away with it. We don't know. If you buy it at Best Buy, potentially or maybe Target, <laughs> there's ways around it. Uh, but for, to get really in detail with that stuff, you have to give him a call or at least give him a DM and uh, he'll go through exactly what uh, situation that you're in. Exactly. All right. So uh, do you have any trucking clients currently? Yes, I do. Uh, I started my career as, you know, most don't know, but I was in big corporate before I left out and started my own practice. Some of my biggest clients were trucking clients. And I'm talking about the cream of the crop of they have fleets of trucks. Nice. Thousands of trucks all over the country even some internationally in Canada. So I was able to see at that level and also see, you know, owner operators are just the, just starting out with one truck. And believe it or not, that's how they started. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So you've seen pretty much everything in between. Correct. And you're yep. here to help everybody, no exactly. matter how big or how small yep. the company is. I left, I left big corporate and I was like, you know what, I'm going to take my talents, <laughs> like LeBron did, I'm going to take my talents and, you know, bring it to the small business area. But small business is very subjective. It could be from zero dollars to a billion dollars that's it <laughs> all right so uh if you're in the trucking industry uh and you're looking to pay less in taxes definitely find a fit accountant or give them a call directly uh when it comes to some things that you can actually help your clients with let's give them some gold uh what are some of the ways that most people don't know that they can actually keep the cash uh, so well, first, before we go into that, let's talk about what's the difference between cashes and profits, right? Because a lot of people think, okay, if I made a million dollars in profit, that must mean I have a million dollars in cash. Yeah. Is that always the case? Or no, it's not. Work? It's not. And believe it or not, this is a common issue. I don't like to call it a problem. A common issue I have with new entrepreneurs who are doing well, making more money than they've ever made. 
they look at their what we call profit and loss statement and you know take a step back what is a profit and loss statement that is the income you brought in and less the deductions or write-offs and then that's your profit so they're like hey but Payan, uh you know why doesn't my profit match what's in my bank account and I'm like that is a great question which is where i always insert what we call the statements of cash flow a little complex but we'll get to it in a minute but the reason why profit and your actual cash is not there because there are items in your income statement, your profit and loss statement that don't there's 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 items on your on that it's not on there that affects like your cash. Like if somebody buys a, the Gucci belt, Correct. it's going to take cash exactly. away from you, but you can't expense it. <laughs> you in can't your expense business, it. So so it's going to reduce. Uh, so your profit's going to be higher. Right? Exactly. Exactly. That's why I said no Gucci belts, guys. <laughs> I know I'm telling about the Gucci belt, but you won't not believe how many guys go get a Gucci belt, uh, Gucci sandals, and I'm walking around with my. I think my. I think my shoes cost me like. Uh, Twenty five bucks. Yeah, you, you're you're pretty frugal on the shoe size. Yes. Yeah, I, you know what? I like I like some nice Ferragamo shoes. You know, That's true. just but, and not all the time. Can you write that off? Some uh, no, I no? cannot. Okay. <laughs> Nobody can write off shoes. <laughs> now you know, uh, believe it or not, truck drivers, owner operators, if they have certain boots that they need for work, remember, ordinary and necessary, it's required, ah. safety wise. That's a write-off. So, so if, those not, are shoes that you could potentially write off. So if Gucci makes some boots. Uh, Trucking boots, absolutely. All right. So, <laughs> Gucci, if you're watching, for all those truck drivers out there. Yeah. All right. So, a profit and loss, I think we understand. Uh, you're, you sh can show a lot of profit, but if you don't have the cash, you're still going to pay taxes on whatever profits that you show. Exactly. Your starting point for your tax return when you pay taxes as a business owner, it starts with profit. So, if you have profit but you really don't see that cash because you spent it on not, things that don't belong on your profit and loss. Now you're, you know, now you're in trouble because you made money to the IRS, you profited, but you don't have the money to pay the taxes. Like some of the thing, like one of the examples that I've seen is like when somebody takes their business money, business bank account, and goes put a down payment on a house. Right? Cor correct. That doesn't, that, like, you're getting rid of the cash, but you're not getting rid of the profit. It's like you're reading my mind. That's probably the most common example. Um, they have a hundred thousand dollar profit. You're like, whoa, I made a hundred thousand profit, meaning they had enough income write offs to still have a profit of a hundred thousand dollars, right? They take that hundred thousand dollars and they're like, we could buy our dream home. You know, of course they're not going to pay. Uh, they're not going to buy the house for a hundred thousand, not in Jersey or anywhere. I would say nowadays, but. That hundred thousand dollars serves as a down payment. So they're like, "Hey, buying, I put a down payment on the house." I was like, "Congratulations, that's great." Comes tax time. I was like, "Hey, you know, we've exhausted all your write-offs, and you still have a hundred thousand dollars that you need to pay taxes on." So they're like, "Oh, but I don't have the money for that." But you're showing the profit. Yeah. So this is the biggest mistake, and this is why I always like to speak to my clients at least once a quarter. Because I can tell them, hey, by the way, you still have some what we call estimated payments. The IRS requires as a business owner four times, uh, you know, every quarter that you need to make sure that you're paid in because come tax time. Yes, you went to go buy a house or you went to go put a down payment on a house. But now you don't have the money to pay your taxes. So it is. it can get very confusing, especially for first time business owners. Uh, so that's why you definitely need the guidance uh, to help you out throughout this whole thing is now too late for them to kind of do anything about it or is there still things that we can do between now and the end of the year it is it's it's pretty late in the year but it's not the end of the world um we can be what, what i call reactive because you know 11 months ago was us trying to be proactive but now we have two two and a half weeks left to the year end so there's a couple of things that you could do so a common one that i want to share is for example if you are a owner operator or you're thinking about being an owner operator switching from the w2 to the self-employed you can purchase a truck but you know you need money to purchase a truck so you walk into the dealership and you're like hey i want that truck that truck is two hundred thousand dollars because trucks are expensive nowadays right that truck and i th this is a true story they said hey Brian, i don't have the cash what am i going to do i'm like hey listen why don't you finance it they're like, but I won't get the deduction. I won't get the write-off. I thought you only write off what you pay. And I'm like, actually, that is incorrect. If you put a down payment and you finance it, right? So you have to, your, your intent is to own it eventually. So you pay over time, finance. The IRS allows you to write off 100% of that through what we call bonus depreciation. 
So you could walk away and then in the last couple of weeks of the year, you're going into entrepreneurship or maybe you wanna buy another truck, right? That's a $200,000 write off that could lower your income and you actually didn't pay the cash for it. So you're telling me if I made $200,000 in profit after working my butt off as an owner operator, maybe I have multiple trucks and I want to be able to pay no tax so that I can reduce my profit, but I also wanna keep some cash. The best thing to do is say I have $200,000 in my bank account. Uh, I'm not gonna spend that $200,000 on a truck because then I don't have any money to actually to operate. operate my yeah. business. So I can go and maybe put $20,000 on a truck that's worth 200,000 brand new. And as, as long as I take delivery of that truck before the end of the year, I can write off that whole two hundred thousand. Is that yes, correct? and you. The key word is not even not only the delivery of it, but you have to place it in service. Mm. So you can buy something and you didn't take it off the lot or you didn't do anything with it. The IRS deems that as you have not placed it in service. Okay. So placing a service can mean as you turn on the truck, you went down the street, you uh, went to go take it for a wash. Place and service. Boom. Oh. <laughs> so that's one way where we can kind of, or the fit accountant here, Mr. Bayan, can actually walk you through the different steps uh, and one the biggest levers that we can kind of pull between now and the end of the year. So one other thing you were talking to me about before we got on was how can we actually get a twelve thousand dollar deductible or an expense onto our company if we are a truck driver. So that's a great question. You're probably talking about the IRS per diem. Yeah. So this is this was actually made for industries like the truck like the trucking industry for owner operators or you know people who go out and they're actually driving the loads. The IRS typically for meals and entertainment when you leave and you go and you buy a meal and you have it with somebody or you have it for business use, it's fifty percent deductible. But because of COVID, CARES Act, uh, it's one hundred percent deductible as long as you have it in a restaurant and you pay for it, right? That's different from what this is. The per diem, the IRS says, hey, we'll give you a rate, which I believe it's $69. It increases every year uh, in, as long as it's within the US. You take the $69 and multiply by the days that you're working as, a, as an owner operator. That's what they call the per diem, and you multiply that out by 80%. So you're probably asking, but what if I don't spend the money? What if you only spend 20 bucks on food? Well, the per diem is for the whole day. So essentially, you could save money because you can write off twelve thousand dollars. Let's say you take, you spend two hundred days on the road. Two hundred days on the road. Now, it doesn't mean you're over the road. It could just mean that you're inside of a truck. Correct. Correct. As long as you get into the truck and you actually do some work, whether it's a half day or a full day, yeah. it's still a day, right? It has to be exactly. It has you. You have to be operating the truck. It has to be away from your home. Away from your home. Yeah. Perfect. And then as long as you have records to do that, which truckers have, which is their time logs, right? Yeah. And their and electronic logs, then you know exactly how many days you're out yeah. and you times that by whatever your per diem rate is. And then you get you multiply to write that by off. 80% and that's a write off. And I, this is actually a cleaner way to keep track of it because a lot of uh, truck owners, they are actually horrible receipts. Yes, they are. Right, especially if they have cash or the credit card. Credit card is great, but most of them it's cash. And now they're like, Brian, I know had meals was well, I can't do anything for you if I don't have something to substantiate it, which means support. So the per diem was actually created for that. So then now you just write off the day because how much are you spending? Let's say you're spending 50 bucks. You're still making out good. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So that's a very cool way that truck drivers can save at least $12,000 uh, in, of income for their taxes. So as a kind of wrap up, the whole goal of the game, if, you, if the goal is to keep as much money as possible, is to reduce your profit to as little as possible while keeping as much cash as possible. Exactly. Correct? And in order for somebody to do that correctly without getting in trouble with the IRS, they need somebody like you on their team. Absolutely. And what are other things that you see truck drivers actually get in trouble with when it comes to government and taxes and that kind of stuff? It's really the support and the record keeping. I would say that's the biggest pain point. And what I mean by that is the, if you're an owner operator um, or you have a fleet of trucks, you have to account for all of that, right? You have to record keep. That's where bookkeeping and accounting comes in. The amount of successful, and you believe it or not, very, very successful uh, owner operators who do very well, their books are in shambles. So I was very surprised to see this even come into this level, you know, of uh, in terms of income with business owners. So a lot of times when they get in trouble, and I, I've had clients who have been auditor for previous years that I wasn't representing them, but I was able to walk them through and you know get them no change audits because we have to put things together. So it takes a lot of time, so it's worth the investment doing it right in the beginning. Now, 
if you've already started and you need to do a cleanup, guess what? Sooner than later is better. Because you you and your team can actually do the bookkeeping for the for the truck Correct. drivers. Correct, correct. No exactly. matter how big or how small their fleet is. Yeah, so you can worry about generating income, which is what you're great at, and let us worry about the accounting and bookkeeping, which we could do in our sleep. Because I've seen a lot of truck drivers trying to do accounting on QuickBooks. <laughs> it's not a fun It's time. tough, yeah. As, as user-friendly as QuickBooks is, the reason they clients come to us is because they don't have to worry about that. They know they're in good hands and then they could just go out and do what they do best is generate income. Boom. So if you are interested into the Fit Accountant, make sure you find them on Instagram or what's your phone number? 908-543-4716. Nice. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of How to Save Your Taxes for 2022 if you're a truck driver. Uh, if you don't like paying taxes like me, I do everything I can legally to make sure I pay the least amount of taxes as possible. And this is the guy that helps me out throughout the entire process itself. So if you're a truck driver or maybe you're just a normal business owner or maybe you want to become a truck driver, you want to start getting businesses and getting your licensing in place and all that stuff, you can help them out with that too, right? Yes, I can. Nice. Yeah. So no matter what, everyone has to pay taxes. There's two things that are guaranteed in life, my friends. One is that you're going to die. Two is that you're going to pay taxes as long as you make money. So let's try to reduce those taxes as much as possible. And if you don't have your CDL license, the third guarantee in life now is that we can guarantee that you walk away with your CDL as long as you come to Driving Academy because we're going to give you over 100 hours of training and we'll set you up with our guaranteed training course where we're going to give you unlimited tries at the road test itself. So as long as you don't give up on yourself, we're not going to give up on you. And I would implore you to make sure you sign up before the end of the year because the pricing is going to increase dramatically in the new year of January 1st. So you definitely want to give us a call, 908-525-3609. If you already got your license, then that's the guy you want to call. And your number again is? 908-543-4716. All right, guys, I hope to get you on your road to freedom. And freedom means paying less in taxes, so make sure you do something about it. Thank Thanks you for having me. And have a good day. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really going to help us out. Click on that button. And if you want to continue yourself on your road to freedom, here's more videos to watch. There's endless amounts. Hopefully, we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.